for some down and dirty racing. Monster Truck Madness 64 for the Nintendo 64 is a 1999 port of Monster Truck Madness 2, which was developed by Terminal Reality and published by Microsoft for the PC in 1998. The N64 version was ported by Edge of Reality and co-published with Rockstar Games, and is the sequel to Monster Truck Madness, which was a PC exclusive game. At its core, Monster Truck Madness 64 is a racing game, which features 20 of the biggest names in monster truck racing, such as Bigfoot, Gravedigger, and uh, well, before playing this game, those were the only two trucks I knew, so they've at least got the casual fan covered. in the shuttles, a five-ton red-eyed monster ready to crush its prey. It's Grave Digger, the high-flying, awe-inspiring megastar of motorsports. Watch Grave Digger's toughest competition do their talking. I'm not afraid of him. He's nothing. Off and on the track with wild wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. It's Grave Digger coming at you in this all-new, never-before-seen home video spectacular. Order now. In addition to the racing, there are a handful of mini-games, which include monster truck versions of soccer and hockey, neither of which are overly inspiring, but there is a King of the Hill type competition called Summit Rumble, where you work to stand your ground on a platform located at the center of an arena while trying to keep three other trucks at bay. Whoever can last the longest on the platform before time runs out wins. This game mode is actually pretty fun, but it doesn't have much in the way of legs, so you're not going to be able to squeeze a ton of gameplay out of it. Now while I don't know a whole lot about monster trucks, I do remember as a kid growing up in the 80s and 90s that monster trucks were seemingly everywhere, especially on toy store shelves. My personal favorite monster truck toy as a kid was the Animal, which had a catchy jingle and a neat gimmick where when the going got tough, claws would spring from the tires and help the truck navigate rough terrain. I never actually owned the animal as a kid, but that commercial haunted me my entire childhood. And as far as toys go, was the one that got away. Can anything stop the animal? The animal! It's a big, powerful 4x4. Four four. But when the going gets tough, it bears its claws to climb over things that get in its way. The animal, the animal, can anything stop? The animal, the animal. The animal, clawing its way to the top. The animal, each sold separately. Batteries not included. New from Galoob. thing I remember about monster trucks from back in the day was their close association with wrestling, which makes sense. Both were traveling attractions that shared a lot of the same audience, so a partnership seemed like a natural fit. During the Monday Night War era, WCW had a prominent relationship with monster trucks, many of which would adopt a WCW skin and be featured on WCW program. The most infamous being 1995's Halloween Havoc where Hulk Hogan and the Giant, who's more commonly known now as the Big Show, would face off in a monster truck sumo match on the rooftop of a building. This was the beauty of 90s wrestling absurdity at its best. The trucks would go nose to nose and eventually Hogan would push the Giant out of the sumo rig. But what happened after was even more magnificently ludicrous as Hogan and the Giant would end up tussling on the rooftop and the Giant would fall off the edge of the building presumably plummeting to his death. If you've never seen it, I'm sure this all sounds made up. I promise you it's not. And I'd encourage you to check out Halloween Havoc 95 to see for yourself. Who's it gonna be at the back of this pack? 
Aside from the Monster Truck sumo match, WCW actually had a deeper relationship with the Monster Truck community, which is evident in this game, as several of the selectable trucks have skins representing WCW wrestlers, which included trucks named after Hollywood Hogan, The Outsiders, Sting, and Bret Hart. Not to mention, Kevin Nash is featured in the game's commercial. Come on, Big Sexy. What's wrong? I've got Monster Truck Madness! Monster Truck Madness for Nintendo 64! The biggest, baddest monster truck game in the world! 19 trucks to choose from, including Big Boy and the WCW NWO Wrestle Trucks! Multiplayer Mania allows one to four players to compete in seven modes of play, including battle games. Monster Truck Madness! Reach out and crush someone! Get ready! Go! Don't forget to hit your checkpoint! Checkpoint! Not unlike wrestling, monster truck events are a bit ambiguous. And since my reviews all fall under the mostly sports game umbrella, the first question that comes to mind is if monster truck competitions are an actual sport, or more specifically, a legitimate motor sport. A good place to start is with Monster Jam, who, at least in America, seems to be the governing body of all things Monster Truck. Monster Jam is described as a live motorsport event tour, with series events sanctioned by the United States Hot Rod Association. Individual event formats can vary, but the main attraction is always the racing, two-wheel skills competition, and freestyle competitions. Drivers who compete in these events swear that Monster Jam isn't rigged, and that the events are true competitions that aren't scripted. Either way, I don't think there's a whole lot of betting action on monster truck events, so who cares? And like most motorsports, there still is an element of danger and the possibility that things could go horribly wrong. So that counts for something. The only monster truck event I've ever been to in my life was the recent Monster Jam show featured in the intro that I figured would be good inspiration for this game review. So I'm far from an expert, but from what I could tell, the trick to each event seemed to be how delicate and deliberate the drivers had to be. Monster trucks generate anywhere from 1500 to 2000 horsepower and are capable of speeds up to 100 miles an hour. So with all that raw power and a relatively small space, it would be pretty easy for things to go sideways quick. But that's apparently the trick. It's not about going all out, it's more like controlling short bursts of power and never unleashing the vehicle's full potential. And that's also the trick to this game. It doesn't matter the truck you pick or the track conditions, they all drive like they're on ice. So going all out in the game isn't going to do you any favors. Not unlike the real deal, it's not about the raw power, but more about your discipline to maintain control over the vehicle. Restraining the full power of each truck for all but a handful of straightaways. While unleashing too much power at a real monster truck event might result in plowing down spectators, in Monster Truck Madness 64, unleashing too much power will send you careening off course, many times to a comical degree. And while you do get used to maintaining control in the game, for what it's worth, constantly having to be restrained isn't really my kind of fun when it comes to a racing game. For its time, the graphics are okay. There's a good variety of trucks, racetracks, weather conditions, and power-ups to keep things interesting to a degree. But for me, that's all outweighed by the overarching need to drive conservatively. something missing in this game, and seemingly it's something that most monster truck events have done away with over the years, and that's the car crushing. Well, I'm no monster truck expert, for as long as I can remember, car crushing was a staple of monster truck events. People like seeing shit get destroyed, that's just a universal fact. And from what I was able to find, the lack of car crushing is due to a handful of incidents 
where shrapnel and debris from the cars being crushed has been jettisoned into the stands, occasionally striking a spectator. And while everyone loves a good souvenir, that's not always the case when it impales the guy sitting next to you. The move away from crushing cars was supposedly due to modern vehicles being comprised of more plastic debris than older vehicles, which once again proves they don't make them like they used to. Hold on to your hats! The big one is coming to the Silverdome this Saturday night, 8 p.m. WKBD, TV 50, and 101 FM, WRIF. Welcome to Metro Chevy Dealer's U.S. Hot Rod 7th Annual Thrill Show Spectacular. See screaming butt bomb funny cars side by side. Then the nation's top monsters are out to climb and crush them on the cars. Hollywood stuntman Brian Carson will attempt his five-story mid-air collision, plus demolition derby and funny car tug of war. Tickets now at all Ticketmaster outlets and the Silverdome box office this Saturday night, 8 p.m. Pontiac Silverdome. It's Crash Rema. Rema. Rema.